The day our current events uh, involves a congresswoman from New York named um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who's also called AOC. <clears throat> um, AOC's kind of my hero. Um, she has an elaborate backstory. She got elected to Congress as a taco waitress and bartender, <clears throat> not far from where you stayed in New York. Uh, she was working at a bar in Union Square, which is the 14th Street. You stayed uh, with me in North Dan and 23rd Street. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so she doesn't, if there's one thing that's not perfect about her, she doesn't make that many jokes. But one of her best jokes is she had to get elected to Congress in order to get health insurance. Um, because they don't give taco waitresses health insurance. So she was 27 when she ran for Congress. She became the youngest congressperson ever. Uh, a younger guy has since been elected, but <clears throat> she's still only 31 years old. And she ran when she was 27. And she ran against the longest serving con Democratic congressman in New York City, a man named Crowley. He's not a bad guy, he's a progressive. But um, he probably didn't take her completely seriously. Um, he never debated her. And when he was scheduled to debate her, he sent a woman of color from his office to stand in for him. As sort of, which, you know, <clears throat> what was he thinking exactly? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just going to read this. Um, Ocasio-Cortez began her campaign in April of 2017 while waiting tables and tending bars at Flats Fix, a taqueria in New York City's Union Square. Quote, for 80% of the campaign, I operated out of a paper grocery bag hidden behind the bar, she told Bon Appetit. <clears throat> she was the first person since 2004 to challenge Joe Crawley, the Democratic caucus chair in the primary. In other words, people didn't even go against him in a primary. He hadn't had a primary in over a dozen years. To, to say the least, <clears throat> she faced a financial disadvantage, but she said, you can't really beat big money with more money. You have to beat them with a totally different approach. Ocasio-Cortez's campaign undertook grassroots mobilization and did not take donations from corporations. Her campaign poster designs were said to have been taken inspiration from revolutionary posters from the past. <clears throat> On June 18th, a debate in the Bronx was scheduled, but Crowley did not show up. He sent former New York City Council member Annabelle Palmer in, in his place. And as Ocasio-Cortez commented, um, <clears throat> I guess he just figured if he sent another woman of color, that worked, you know what I mean? Kind of right. one right. against the other. Um, he's not that bad a guy. Well, he's unemployed now. Well, who, I guess he's not unemployed, but he's not a congressman anymore. <clears throat> Ocasio-Cortez is in the news because she did a video uh, based on the January 6th assault where the troops of know-nothings that <clears throat> Trump aroused showed up in Washington and invaded the Capitol building. Um... <clears throat> she took refuge in it, another congresswoman's office. And that congresswoman, trying to be reassuring, said, I'm a mother. I've got stuff in here. We could stay here for six months. And Ocasio became emotional and said, I hope I live long enough to be a mother. She thought she was going to die <clears throat> because um, I don't know if you know this about conservatives and whatever those guys are called, those troops that... Um, yeah, a YouTube Trump. thread, a YouTube thread come to life, somebody said. <laughs> right. What are they called? The Proud Boys. And, you know, they hate African-Americans and they hate Jews, but they really hate <clears throat> uh, progressive, assertive women. That's the thing they really hate. So they really, they wanted to kill um, Nancy Pelosi and they wanted to kill... Um, Ocasio-Cortez and she got death threats all the time so when they raided the place and she 
they stayed five hours in this other congresswoman's office, <clears throat> and she thought she was going to die. And so that's what this video is about. And in the course of the video, which is quite long, 45 minutes or longer, she made this statement. I haven't told many people that in my life, but I'm a sexual assault survivor. But when we go through trauma, trauma compounds on each other. So the New York Times headline about this incredible event and her feeling threatened, her life feeling threatened, Ocasio-Cortez reveals she was sexually assaulted. So that were the main thing about her <clears throat> and about that moment. USA Today did a whole feature story about it um, where they got a lot of experts. They didn't get Gabor, but they got a lot. Everybody's into trauma. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can't, and the headline yeah, of yeah. US Today says, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is explaining something about trauma. Expect Experts say we should listen. What do you think all the experts said? Oh, they they're want to play on her um, talking about trauma compounding each other. The trauma's buried somewhere there and uh, that it ruins your life and all, all the standard trauma exports. So they're saying this as though this is a deeply... If you read the article, you'd, ima you'd imagine the woman would never leave her room. Right. <clears throat> She's the youngest congresswoman of all time. When, you know, she became political, uh, she had a very nurturing family. Her father died after she left high school and she was at Boston University, but she was her father was a socialist, so she was always very political. He took her to Washington, D.C. to see the monuments. <clears throat> he was a, a American-born Puerto Rican. Her mother was a Dominican immigrant. And as it went to Boston University, she got involved in politics immediately. And she went to work for Ted Kennedy. And she was the only one who spoke Spanish. So everybody who called in who spoke Spanish, they said, well, they better talk to Alexandria. And um, she was 19 years old. So she was always, let's say, ahead of her time. And she was always an organizer. So let's, there are, Here's a woman who stands for progressivism. She doesn't take anything from anybody. A very This video is the most famous video, but the second most famous video was a guy actually named Ted Yoho, called her a fucking bitch on the steps of the Capitol. And she waited for him to apologize. He never apologized. So then she took him apart in another video. <clears throat> but she's not... A fearful woman. She's not a woman. And as she said, I don't tell many people because she doesn't identify herself as a trauma survivor. She, she says people should listen to trauma stories. She defines herself as an independent, incredibly strong person. So she skipped the inauguration. She didn't go where Joe, um, <clears throat> where Joe Biden was sworn in she didn't skip it because she was afraid of anything she went to rally behind a group of striking drivers in the bronx you know you when you're a congressperson you don't get a bodyguard you're walking around the bronx somebody can come up and shoot you in the head so <clears throat> why did she tell the story at all what was the purpose of her doing the video the purpose of the video was to strike out politically at Ted Cruz and other people. She, fe she says that Cruz and Howley and several congressmen enabled uh, the strikers to come, the uh, revolutionaries, the, what's the word they all keep using? Uh, the <clears throat> incendiaries, the whatever. And she holds it against them. And she, she's not backing down from any of them. Cruz is one of the most powerful guys in the Senate. She's only a, a you know, second term congresswoman. She's doing battle with them. Yeah. So we've gone, what stories, what, 
what we're talking about, what we always talk about is what stories people tell. The story that everybody tells from that one minute blurb in a 45 minute video is that she's a sexual, she was sexually violated, sexually assault, right. sexual assault survivor. <clears throat> and the real story is how did a woman who didn't have every advantage in life, her father died when she was in college and she had to come home. Her mother was a domestic and a bus driver and she had to come home to help save their house to be able to pay the mortgage. And she got a job as a waitress and a bartender and she organized a group of people around her to beat the fourth most powerful man in Congress. Is that an unbelievable story? Especially because person... we're led to believe that she should have folded in to herself and disappeared or something. The, 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 the write-ups are about a, a person <clears throat> who can barely survive. <laughs> and, you know, I just want to... The stories we tell ourselves, uh, there was a great social psychologist back in the 60s and 70s named David McClellan. Mm -hmm. And he did a book called The Achieving Society. And the way he approached it was he analyzed stories in children's books. And then he measured economic growth in the decades following. And when a child storybook told a story mm -hmm. about people being assertive and capable and high achievement motivation, the, the economy boomed in that society. We're selling now a stories of trauma, stories of being incapable of functioning and coping. We're selling those, our best mental health professionals are selling those stories. And the examples they're using, they're selling those stories based on stories they have to twist them so badly to get fit them into that pigeonhole. It's alarming. And so I just want to make people aware of the narratives that dominate our lives. I would, Ocasio-Cortez is a role model, not only she's, they, people talk about her being a role model for little girls, like Kamala Harris, the vice president, she's a role model for me. I hope I can be as brave as her and stand up when you know you're standing alone, and when you feel like she thought <clears throat> she was going to die that night. <clears throat> so that's the uh, we could call this the non-traumatization of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. But what do you think their initial statement was about? What do you think in her mind? We can't play mind reader, but your best guess even though she's such an achievement oriented takes no crap kind of a woman who just every time she gets knocked down, she builds herself back up twice as strong. When she said, um, you know, I've experienced this kind of trauma and that compounds in itself. What do you think she was trying to say? Well, that's a good question. She, she stuck it in there because she was shaking with fear. And I, maybe she was thinking to her, I mean, she had, she had good reason to believe that they were going to kill her when they mm -hmm. broke into that place. Then there were people that would have killed her. So I see it as a completely rational, and I would have been shaking with fear too. Maybe she was so unused to that feeling, she it did turn up again, and she had to check inside of herself to where that was located. But right. It didn't dominate her behavior. Right even for one day. By the next day, she was out there talking about, uh, Cruz wanted to go, collaborate with her. They, they both happened to have the same attitude towards this crazy Game Boy stock thing, whatever the hell that's about. And he wanted to sort of take a position with her. And she said, this is her, this is what she said. You're trying, you were trying to get people to kill me. I'm not gonna do anything with you. So, <clears throat> If you think, well, how is a person who's traumatized react to that kind of stress? They quit, they cower or away, they don't stand up and be counted for. She did the reverse, and that, and that, which brings up, why did she do it? She likened Cruz and Holly and others to the sexual assault abusers that she experienced. She said 
they're just like them. So she was going into her experience as a way of understanding those kinds of people and how they treated her. How court bullying isn't a big enough term. And she used it as an insight, as a way of gaining strength against those people. They're all men. And so isn't that remarkable how to build from an, uh, an adverse, I don't, well, I, I wouldn't imagine she was a child at the time. I don't know. She didn't describe it. She didn't get into the details. That's not but her it's, cup of tea. That's like the thing that's true about, the reason people believe theories that are bad theories is that there's some kernel of truth somewhere in them. And I think that you hit on the part that's true, which is that she had like a sensory cue, a reminder of how she felt another time when she had undergone a traumatic experience. And so whatever she was saying probably uh, echoed that or was describing that experience. But just because you associate one traumatic experience with another traumatic experience, or maybe you even think that the second traumatic experience that you're facing is worse because of the first one or, or it stinks because you're aware of the first one, it's you can't extrapolate from that that people become addicted or the traumas are necessarily hurting them forever or you know they can't do anything or certainly not that it changes your brain chemistry in a way that you can't flourish or thrive well people are right trying i mean the reason of course ace was developed was to predict drug addiction and alcoholism right people that obviously people don't think about drug addiction and alcoholism in terms of ocasio cortez and what enabled her to overcome it was her purpose her, mm. She was nurtured by both her parents. Her father was an educated man. He was an architect. Her mother, her father was uh, a, a American born Puerto Rican. Her mother was an immigrant from the Dominican Republic. They both loved her and supported her. But um, <clears throat> she didn't turn in, she didn't become a drug addict or an alcoholic. She became an assertive source of power. The whole, I, so the whole question isn't, do people experience trauma? The whole question is how do people process and digest that trauma? As I said, if you read the USA Today story, it, it looks like the buildup to explain somebody who's a, a drug addict on the street. Yeah, yeah. And you're talking about, <clears throat> I mean, Nancy Pelosi's almost 80. She's, and Kamala Harris is in her 50s. They're the most powerful women in America. Everybody expects Ocasio Cortez to be, she might be running for Senate against the current Senate leader um, uh, from the Democratic Senate leader from Brooklyn, actually, where I live. Um, <clears throat> she turned all of that into being a positive, strong person. And what did she have that allowed her to do that besides skills? Besides having been nurtured by her parents, she has purpose. She's, you can't listen to her talk for, when I started, I said, if she has a weak point, it's, uh, she doesn't make a lot of jokes. <laughs> She's a woman with a mission. She feels that people are deprived in America. She feels the rich are taking advantage of the poor. She's, don't tell anybody outside of New York. She's a socialist. Um, she doesn't identify it purely racially. She became involved in politics after she graduated college by uh, backing uh, Bernie Sanders, who she backed for president. Yep. You know, and there were obvious, well, Kamala Harris was running for president at the time. She's got an ideology in mind. She's not take, being sidetracked by anything else. So <clears throat> obviously not everybody's going to be Ocasio-Cortez. None of us is going to be her. Um, but we can all aspire to deal with the sticks and stones, the threats, the moments of weakness that we all feel and turn it into around to fuel our purpose and our progress in life. So she should, you know, um, we can make a big banner the way I look at it. Unlike USA Today, we'd have a big circle with trauma in it and her picture superimposed over it. <laughs> And a cross over the, you know, line going through trauma. Mm. Ocasio-Cortez is not 
what clinical cases of trauma look like. 